Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Spider-Verse Retrospectives. So, we have now looked at all of the relevant material related to Spider-Geddon. We've looked at the lead-in material, we've looked at the main storyline itself, and we have looked at all the tie-ins. So, I think before we wrap up the Spider-Geddon era properly, there is one more thing we need to look at. The thing that actually, well, is more relevant than anything to a loose plot thread. Specifically, we are going to be taking a look at the follow-up material for Spider-Geddon. Now, unlike with Spider-Verse and Venomverse, the follow-up material for Spider-Geddon is not as numerous as with those things. Whereas Spider-Verse had had a mini series and then an ongoing series in the form of the in form of Spider-Verse of the second Spider-Verse mini series and the Web Warriors comics and with Ven and Venomverse having the Poison X storyline in the Venomized sequel, the follow-up material for Spider-Geddon is well just a handful of issues. Specifically, the follow-up material we're going to be looking at is from material from the second run of the Superior Spider-Man. Now, yeah, the Superior Spider-Man actually wound up getting another solo series following the events of Spider-Geddon. Basically, after Otto resumed the mantle of, well, the Superior Spider-Man during the events of Spider-Geddon, he continued going on to do his superhero work around San Francisco, and the second run of the, of the Superior Spider-Man just, well, showed him doing all of his superhero work and just trying to, once again become a better person while t carrying on the mantle of Spider-Man. I have not actually read the entire- any- a lot- I haven't actually read the first six issues of this run as- well, I'd rather actually finish reading the Superior- the first run of the Superior Spider-Man before I move on to the second run, so I was hesitant to buy any volume from these trades. It doesn't mean I didn't want to read them, it's just I wanted to read the material that came before first. However, when I saw this particular trade, there was one little thing that made me break my wait to wait till you read the other stuff rule. And as a result, I wound up adding this little baby to my Spider-Verse collection. What is that? What was it when it made me break it? Well, you can't, if you can't tell by looking at the cover, then, then, sorry, then you're probably gonna have to wait to find out. But with that said, is this comic worth my time? Is it more than worthy of being part of thy Spider-Verse collection? Or is it just a good story in general? Well, let's take a look at it and find out. As today, we're going to start looking at the follow-up material to Spider-Geddon as we take a look at the second half of the second run of the Superior Spider-Man. And to kick things off, we're of course going to be taking a look at the Superior Spider-Man Volume 2, Number 7. And of course, we're going to be taking a look at these comics in the Spider-Verse vlog that focuses exclusively on Spider-Verse first comics by looking at a tie-in to a completely different event. Yeah, for the first two videos of the of this trade, I'm going to be kind of cheating a little. While I do like to exclusively keep these videos focused on Spider-Verse and anything related to Spider-Verse, well, the first two issues of this trade have nothing to do with Spider-Verse, or even Spider-Geddon for that matter. For, honestly, the only things that really tie it to the Spider-Verse as a whole it's just that the main character is the superior Spider-Man. Otherwise, this has absolutely nothing to do with anything related to Spider-Verse or Spider-Geddon. It's only the last four issues... It's, it's only issues 9 through 12 that have any significant ties to Spider-Geddon. So, yeah, these first two videos are kind of a cheat. The only reason I'm looking at the first two issues of this comic as a part of these vlogs is because, well, they're collected in the trade, and I figure, why the hell not? I'm looking at all the comics via trade format anyway, so I might as well... So I decided I'd just include them anyway. So if you're not interested in these first two issues, I don't mind if you skip today's and Saturday's videos because they're going to be focusing exclusively on those comics. So... Apologies in advance if you're here for Spider-Verse and are disappointed. With that being said, though, what event are these first two issues tying into? Well, specifically, they are tying into an event that had been going on at the time called War of the Realms, which the premise for the War of the Realms is this. The King of the Dark Elves, Malekith, had wound up leading an invasion across all the other nine realms, or all the ten, across the ten realms, and he wound up conquering all, well, at least the majority of them. Actually, he conquered nine of them, with his last stop being Midgard, a.k.a. Earth. The invasion, one of, the invasion was focused in New York, but one of spreading across the globe, and basically the tie-ins just focus on the various heroes of the world as they're trying to deal with this invasion while, while, while you know, doing their hero thing, protect, saving lives, protecting innocent civilians from being caught in the crossfire, and so forth. Which is actually what these first two issues focus on. As issue seven, uh, as issue seven of Superior Spider-Man opens up with Otto as he's, well, 
disintegrating the residents of San Francisco. Okay, he's not actually disintegrating them. Basically, what's going on is that the is that Otto, anticipating all the carnage with the War of the Realms, wound up creating a device that he used one up by one on the citizens of San Francisco, keeping them essentially out of phase with the rest of reality and safe and sound. And no sooner, and it's no, and it's a good thing he did that when he did, because San Francisco is being set upon by frost giants who proceed to start tearing the city apart, looking for any more any. <clears throat> or any mortal that they can chow down on and but thankfully thanks to Otto's efforts they're they're thankfully bereft of of mortal of mortal morsel however even Otto admits that this situation might not be a lot might not work in the long run he hasn't experimented with this technology for a while and he has no idea if they if these if the people of San Francisco can stay in their well limbo state for a lot for a lot for long periods of time before they can't come back so basically Otto realizes he's got to take care of this problem as quickly as possible Possible. And while the Frost Giants do direct their attention towards Otto, and he's able to just successfully get around them thanks to his thanks to his spider powers and his own natural intellect, he he realizes that if he really wants to fix this problem, he's got to get to the source of it, which means he needs to go to which means he needs to go to the source of this invasion. The only problem is he has no idea how to get there. And while he's at the, and while at this point in his character development, he realizes that it's a good idea to get help when you need it. Well, because of events going on in in War of the Realms, communication with other superheroes is out. So even if he so any time he tries to get in contact with any superheroes that he think might be able to help him, including Doctor Strange, who he got a little help with in previous issues of Superior Spider-Man, well, he's uh, he's at a loss. And as he tries and as he tries ringing people up on his on his computers, the only real connection he's able, the only real connection he's able to make is to a reality show focused on the West Coast Avengers, which even he thinks is might be a dumb idea because the West Coast Avengers are essentially just kids and their teams consist and their team consists of and I'm apologizing that I'm going to the book here. I did write them down, but I'd have no idea who most of these characters are, so the comic actually shows what their powers are. The team consists of Quentin Choir, uh, aka Kid Omega, who has psychic level, who has uh, incredible psychic powers. Ramon Watts, aka Alloy, Alloy, who has, who essentially, her, who basically, her, who I think her power is that she has, is that her skin is laced with vibranium. So I guess that makes her super tough. Um, Johnny Watts, aka Fuse, who can transform his body into any material he touches, essentially making him the absorbing man. And the last three members of this team are Gwenpool, a, or Gwenpool, Clint Barton, aka Hawkeye, and America Chavez, who you might remember from the from the movie Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Basically, I have absolutely no idea who half of these characters are. So I honestly didn't really know anything about them when I first read this comic and even now and even by the fact that I had to use the comic as a reference material I don't know I don't again it doesn't really help me a lot as such Otto at first wants to just write off getting the West Coast Avengers help because well they're a bunch of kids and he thinks Hawkeye's past his prime but then he then he notices them that America's part of the team and since her powers allow her to essentially open portals to essentially allow her to open extra dimensional portals he thinks that she might be of aid. As such, he makes his way to Los Angeles and ends up joining the West Coast Avengers as they're duking it out with a with a bevy of frost giants. And while at first, while at first his assistance does kind of help turn the tide a little, the frost giants get a get, get a good chunk of reinforcements that do make it look like that they're going to make Otto and the West Coast Avengers into mincemeat. As such, Otto tell. Otto tells Kid Omega to throw up a psychic force field, which, while, which while he's a little hesitant to do because even he admits he can't keep a force field up for that long, Otto says it's fine. He doesn't need long, and so as the force field goes up and the frost giants keep pounding on the keep pounding on the shield, they start noticing it gets a little hotter out. And well, since they're frost giants. Turning up the heat is actually not a good idea for them, and they quickly realize that if they don't retreat right now, they're gonna melt. As such, they all run for it, and so basically, the and so basically, Otto and the West Coast Avengers are declared the victors. Of course, everyone wonders how Otto was able to do what he just did, you know, turn up the heat, so to speak, and he reveals that he was able to do that via one of his leftover satellites from the storyline Spider-Man Ends of the Earth. It's just that whereas most of the other satellites have were, are brought up, are offline, this one was kept online. And it has a power, and at least has enough of a power source that it can stay on for at least 24 hours, and at which point it'll shut itself off. As and as such, since the other satellites could essentially turn up the heat for half the world, one satellite is able to heat up Los Angeles and in a pinch, so the frost giants won't be able to do anything. Of course, Hawkeye is a little angry at this because, again, 
That was something from his super from Otto's super villain days. But again, it's at least, but at least it helps. Either way, uh, either way, with the with the with the with the, cri with the crisis kind of sort of over in Los Angeles, Otto says that me. Otto says that he's here mostly for America Chavez's help because, well, since she has the power to open up dimensional gateways, he thinks that she might be able to bring him to the sort, bring bring him to the source of all this, so they can essentially just put an end to this entire invasion. Of course, there is there is a few are of some of the uh, that West Coast Avengers have a few arguments against doing this because if they go and try and directly stop all this then that leaves the city unprotected since, you know, the West Coast Avengers are meant to be Los Angeles' heroes and they can't just leave, and what if something happens if they're gone, then that will kind of sort of make them responsible. Ha, which one of the, which what I even love too is that one of the voices of, one of the arguments used against this comes from Gwen Poole herself because, yeah, this is at the point in the comics when her meta-awareness actually became her superpower. So she is fully aware that right now they are in an event tie-in. They're in an event tie-in. So she knows that they really don't have anything to worry about. All they have to do is just, you know, brave this out until the event is over, and then they can go right back to their to their pre-scheduled narratives. And what I like to and what I like too is that there's a quick jab in there saying that if they can't, that it's probably a bad idea for them to go join the front lines. Because since this is a big event comic, then there are still then ultimately they might get that they might end up being thrown to the the pyre to show just how big a, to show how big an event this really is, how dire the stakes truly are, and that typically the people that tend to die are characters that the writers didn't grow up with or legacy characters, which include darker, edgier rebrands of characters that everybody knows that ultimately just want them to go back to the regular characters. So you know. Gwen thinks that maybe she and Otto should duck and cover a little. I I love that. That's that's funny. That's some good joke. That's some good jokes. But either way, Otto is not having any of this. And the more everyone thinks about it, the more they think maybe this will be a good idea. After all, there are still other people in the city that could protect them, and Otto's satellite can at least keep the heat on Los Angeles enough for the Frost Giants to stay away. So as a result, the West Coast Avengers start to think maybe this isn't a bad idea. Maybe they could go directly to the source of things and try and take it down. The only problem is that when America Chavez decides to try and open a portal, it doesn't work, as whatever magic is keeping these gateways open, she well, it, it's disallowing her from being able to use her own power. So, or being or it's disallowing her from using her powers to reach it. So they're still so they're still kind of cut off, which Otto's a little angry at. But they do have another solution, specifically New York. After all, this invasion started in New York, and there are meant to be like, and there are people from. Asgard there. There are refugees there. So maybe with their aid they might be able to get assistance to open a portal directly to directly to the source of this invasion. As such, as such with a more with a heading in mind, America's able to open a gateway to New York and so Otto and the West Coast Avengers jump through and get jump through ready to take it on. They're ready to ready to meet up with the Asgardians. Unfortunately, the instant they arrive in New York, they find themselves smack dab in the middle of a giant fight scene as we see the Fantastic Four duking it out with even more mo duking it out with Dark Elves and Frost Giants. And so the comic ends as, o as Otto and the, and the West Coast Avengers jump in and give the and give the Fantastic Four some much needed assistance with the last panel with the last panel on the con with the last page of the comic having uh, having Otto just shoot just jumping in web sl web sl web slinging as he shouts out the die is cast with Kid Omega thinking that the catcher is so dumb that it kind of goes all the way back around to being cool so there you go excuse me one second sorry about that I was checking a message but yeah that but yeah the, my thoughts on this my thoughts on this issue well i think it's fine i think it's honestly enjoyable basically Basically, what I like about this comic is that it's fully aware that it's just here to waste time. Just be a tie-in to a bigger event before it can get back to the main story that it's trying to tell in its main thing. And as someone who did not read War of the Realms and, quite honestly, is not interested in reading it, I thought this was enjoyable, especially from a character standpoint. Okay, well, like, going back to how this comic is fully aware that it's just here to waste time, how I, how it's able to kind of showcase that and kind of give a wink to the reader and let them know this is fine, just sit back and enjoy for a while, is, well, through Gwenpool in the West Coast Avengers. She is 
fully aware that what she and the rest of the superheroes are doing is just here to kill time until the main event wraps itself up in its core in its core miniseries. And so until then, they just gotta keep braving this thing out until the end and they'll be fine. And in a way, that's enjoyable. That is legitimately enjoyable, especially when she is fully aware of how certain tropes usually work in relation to comics. Especially, again, with the jab towards the superior Spider-Man since he's meant to be like a darker, grittier take on an already popular character who probably is gonna die at some point. So at that point, so I kind of find that funny. Though I will give flack to, the, to her banter a little bit in that for the first time I read this comic, it started to get annoying at points, mostly because she did not stop quipping. Like, she kept talking, well, okay, scratch that. She didn't quip. She just kept talking about how all of this was, like, just a tie-in. Like, that, we don't have to worry about it, guys. We just gotta keep fighting and brave it out, and we'll, everything will resolve itself before you know it. It's like, that's annoying. Like, legit annoying. Like, what, like, I understand that her met that her meta knowledge is part of her whole shtick, and that is what makes her endearing. I do still like Gwenpool. I hopefully showcased that when I talked about Edge of Venom verse number two. But my problem with this is that it really starts to get a little grating when everyone else around her is trying to take this threat seriously, and yet here she is going, guys, it's fine. We're just in a tie-in. Well, it doesn't matter. Like. It's kind of dull, and it makes me feel like she's not as invested in this event as everyone else. And before you say, well, she's a real person in a, in a comic world, of course she knows that none of this ma none of this matters. Well, the thing is, she's a part of this world, she lives in this world, and she knows that people might get hurt. I'm just saying. Just saying, like, I, and we know that Gwen does care about this, and I will still, and I'll say this, something, what, something that occurs in the next issue does make all this better for, on a reread. It's just that the first time when I read the comic, it was kind, it got to me kind of a little, and it wasn't until I reached that, that, until I reached that one section in the next issue that I suddenly kind of put all this in perspective and realized, oh, okay. But that, again, we'll talk about that when we look at issue eight on Saturday. But again, for a first time read, it's annoying. But with that said, what I do like about the comic, again, going back to character stuff, is how Otto is taking all of this. As he's basically, as what I like here is that we're seeing more of Otto working as being a, being a, well, a competent superhero, utilizing the knowledge he has. And again, it carries over with, and uh, well, the title Superior Spider-Man is rather apt when it comes to him because the what he all the steps he takes in this comic are very logical and make sense and what I like is that in some ways they're steeped in character development. For starters, he for starters, the instant he realizes there's a big threat on the horizon that can threaten the populace of San Francisco, he just works to make sure the populace are all safe as he fa as he uses as he ends up using his his dev a device to phase them out of, to phase them out of reality. So they're just out of sync with everything and thus the frost giants won't be able to hurt anyone. It's clever and intelligent and what I like is that he realizes that he has to resolve this conflict quickly because he doesn't because his technology is untested and so he has no idea if the people of San Francisco will actually make it will end up making out of this okay if they will end up making out of this okay so he wants to try and get through this ASAP but is not willing to take it down because he knows that if he lets them out that if he brings them back to reality now they could be in danger so this is probably the lesser of two evils I like that and what I'd also like is that to try and make this thing make everything go by quicker he's he realizes he needs to employ the aid of well other superheroes which even he admits in the comic that he's evolved enough to realize that he will probably need aid when he can and what I do like is that he is doing what I do is he's utilize he's basically just going for the best idea when he's utilizing the best strategy based on the materials he has at his disposal. Like he first the first thing he does is try and potentially contact Doctor Strange, which doesn't work. He can't contact Thor. He can't contact the Avengers because of the uh, because of the communications being cut off, and he realizes he can't go for th that. He can't get the help that he can't that. Because this is all steeped in Thor's thing, he can't contact him, which, little funny thing. He at one point considers that maybe this is all Peter's fault, but that's Otto. He's a jerk, whatever. But even then, 
But even then, what I like is that when he is that he is that when he's bereft of all options and finds himself having to turn to the West Coast Adventures, he realizes well he doesn't really have a lot of kind words to them, although he does do a few quick jabs of them, which does show that he's getting better at the quipping when it comes to being Spider Man. He does still realize the potential that they utilize, and what I and especially in the case of having America Chavez, and when she has limitations, he realizes well why don't we do things this way and see if we can expand on that. What I, that's what I like, and what I get and what it makes it all better too is that. It's still Otto Octavius. Again, this is part of what I liked about the Superior Spider-Man. That while he was doing his best to try and be a better person and help others, he was still a jackass. He was, after all, it's Otto Octavius. He's arrogance incarnate in a former supervillain. This guy is not going to play well with others, even if he knows he has to do it. So I love that even when he has to turn to the West Coast Avengers for help, he's still kind of throwing jabs at them. And when they call him out for some of his BS in the past, he's like, I think he, it's like, I will wasn't very well back then. I think it's rather insensitive of you to bring up my mental illnesses from that time. Like, dude, what the hell is up with you? Like, I find that amusing. But with that being said, it still can... That being said, combine that, combine all of uh, what Otto's doing with the ranting. It just basically, with, or we're not with ranting. What like Gwen Poole's talking about? Essentially, this just is. It's just this is just here to well kill time, but without feeling like it's wasting time. Because what I like here is that part of this whole thing is that Otto is just trying his best to try and find a solution to all this, to help out as in the best way that he can, while also realizing that people, while also realizing that he needs to, well, he, that he needs to rely on others. So I kind of like how that's progressed through this comic and how by the end, and how by the end he's a, and how by the, and how by the end of the issue, at least he's already got a strategy in mind for taking this down, but he hits a roadblock in the fact that there are still some hurdles he needs to, that he needs to go come across, like with America's powers not being able to reach the source of all this plus you know more more enemies in new york when he and when he and the west coast avengers teleport there so again it's good stuff and i dig it so on the whole issue seven uh, on the whole this issue isn't bad it's pretty fun and what i do like is that while it does still feel like it has weight to it considering the circumstances it still feels like just one of those comics that's just there to help you turn off your brain and just enjoy as we see as we see Otto working alongside other superheroes so overall enjoyable issues so yeah that's pretty much all i have to say I thank you for watching, I'm Samuel Johnson, and I will hopefully see you on Saturday as we look at the second half of his tie-ins to War of the Realms, which is also the last of his tie-ins to War of the Realms, before we get back to why you're really here. So, till then, I hope you have a, I hope you have a good evening, I'm Samuel Johnson, I'll hopefully see you on Saturday. Though, if you're not there, I understand. So, till then, take care.